What's up guys, Putty here and welcome back for another episode of Fallout New Vegas. In the last episode we got to the Grub and Gulp, but in this episode we are heading off to what we believe is the Repcon HQ. So, yeah, between episodes I've switched to Fraps recording my microphone now, so if shit goes wrong and audio screws up, I cannot do anything outside of uh, in my video editing software to fix it, so we're... We're running the gambit here. If, if my audio screws up, it's a re-record. It's not a, it's not a video editing software um, fix. Huh. So this is Repcon. I knew it was a, I, I knew it was Repcon something. Just guessed it was the HQ. Bright sun. Robots everywhere. All right. Whoa! Fiends everywhere. Repcon Taurus. Welcome to Repcon Headquarters, Rocketeer. Come all this way to see our little facility, have you? I'm here to answer any and all questions you may have, within specified parameters. And if you'd like, I can provide a tour of our museum. I'd like a tour of the museum. Excellent, excellent. Please be patient. The tour will begin in just a moment. Ready for the Repcon tour, Rocketeers? Courtesy of the fine folks at Robco, I'll be your guide today on the path of scientific discovery. In the lead line case behind me is a spent radioactive rod from one of our old reactors. No need to stand too close. Let's move along, shall we? I guess that's been stolen. Boring old rod, or... What's this? A dull rod? Not so, Rocketeers. This dull rod once powered Repcon's old nuclear-propelled rockets and still contains harmless traces of radioactive material. While this case is lead-line, standards in these cases not specifically requested for this display. Do not touch, look, or stand too close to this exhibit. Keep your legs moving and see the rest of the museum. Traces of radioactive material. As an exercise... As an exercise, stare closely read below, at the rod and try to spot the test uh, telltale glow. How may I serve you, mistress? I don't see it. Look here. A row of multicolored plasma fumes. Careful. They may look How safe may to I drink, you, master, but your stomach is the last place they should be. Why the difference in cylinder size? Refining our production methods has resulted in higher yields of fuel over time. That's why. Plasma? What? Hold up, Rocketeers, what's this? This trio of cylinders isn't a trio of cylinders at all! Clarification. Cylinders and plasma are factually correct designs of display items. Uh, designations of display items. Both by definition and by scientific community. Their container is holding what some scientists call plasma. Can you say plasma? Repcon's always looking to the future. And in our future, we don't have to worry about radiation, health risks, or lawsuits when using this new and improved fuel source to blast our records, the rockets into and out of the sky. To my right, you can see a sample of some old safety barrels Repcon once used to store radioactive waste. Perfectly safe. On my left is an example of a mountain of Repcon safety barrels some legislators claim are poisoning our environment. Ridiculous. Damn it. My, I don't know my left or my right. <laughs> We've all heard stories that radiation is dangerous. Fact or fiction? Rhetorical questions and non... Nomenclature. Nomenclature? I don't even know what that says. Rhetorical questions and nomenclature of exhibit items cannot be used as basis for criminal prosecution. A common sight in factories, military installations, and the basements of selected government-funded middle schools. These safety barrels are... Uh, are just what the name implies. Safe. I don't know. Uh, just as the names imply, safe. While their attraction coloring, uh, attractive coloring can be interpreted as a warning, for Repcon, it's an invitation to a future filled with nuclear power. I'll be right back. I got a show to watch. And we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, nuclear family. Why? Look here. A pile of itty-bitty safety barrels, all nestled together like a family, sitting down to dinner. Now, while well, it's claimed even the safest nuclear... Uh, the safest nuclear waste disposal procedures seep poison into the environment that never ever goes away. In Repcon's case, 
We say it all depends on where you put them. And Nevada's just the place. Nom enclosure for hazardous waste barrels as per Repcon glossary specs. Behind me is our most recent rocket project, which we're keeping under our hats until... Hello. Please remember visiting hours of... The launch, if you'll pardon the expression. And in front of me is a model, not actual size. Of the launch dome we are using to send our rocket screaming into orbit. Rockets away! Just like the rocket you see here, we're aimed at the sky. But we've got a ceiling in the way. See Rocketeers when Repcon is, was, while Repcon is, was focused on non-radioactive propulsion engines. We still need to sneak, uh, yeah, we still need to sneak back and use some of our older, proven techniques with nuclear-driven engines to make space travel a reality. Partnered with our new buddy Robco, We've dug up older, cheaper technology for upcoming orbital projects. No worries, even if you can't always see what we're up to, uh, what we're up to up there, we can see you. Any implication of radioactive material, as negative, is unintentional and no way reflects Robco or its subsidiary Repcon. Now these colourful fellows behind me are Repcon's earliest experiments in flight. Feel free to read the plaques and learn, Rocketeers. I will. But first of all, we need to look at this dome. Ready, set, launch. Force your parents a short drive south and you'll see the retractable dome of Repcon's launch facility. Not actual size. You may have heard wild stories about the rocket flights and their impact on nearby towns and communities, but Repcon feels you can't put a price off space exploration. After all, Rocketeers, you do want to go into space someday, don't you? Statement is figurative and inadmissible as evidence in the court of law. Green Bean. Officially called Z4352-1P by silly engineers, we, refer to, uh, we prefer to call this little scrapper by its true nickname, Green Bean. After all, which would you prefer landing in your back garden? A smoldering Z4352-1P or a Green Bean? Rocket nickname chosen after results of first trial landing, which means this thing basically crashed in a back garden somewhere. One sounds like it belongs if mentioned on the news, and make the news it did. Featuring Repcon's plasma engine, it was so newsworthy that we decided to take quantum matter modulation unit out and see if we could use it for non-explosive uses. Ooh, so I guess they, they took some sort of matter modulating unit out of that and used it for something else. Tour. Due to a generous donation from Robco, this next exhibit showcases the wondrous world of robots. Around you are the incredible iBot, the fearsome Sentry Bot, and the <laughs> always helpful Mr. Handy. That helpfulness runs through our whole line. Big fat fiery Fred. V2932-1 may look like a big fat red rocket, Rocketeers, but old fatty here ran circles around the earth not so long ago. So let's see you uh, let's see you keep up. Sure, V2932-1G's re-entry gave it a more commonly known nickname, Big Fat Fiery Fred, but here at Repcom we chose to focus on the successes and apply what we learned about, non -ex about explosive re resistance shielding to future models and even our landing platforms. The newly reconstructed Repcon launch facility was a direct beneficiary of this discovery. Needle notes. This is the final stop. No! This sleek and purple R77293A needle nose is what happens when you mix fossil fuel, uh, fossil and plasma in a, f uh, in a rocket and shake it up. The fossil fuels punch this sharp-nosed terror through the sky, and the plasma is used to shoot it through space to planets, where Repcon can mine more fossil fuels. Interplanetary mining and resource rights still in negotiation. Continuing the whole cycle again. On our tour. This model of our solar system is a small example of where the partnership between Robco and Repcon hopes to go. See those little rockets zipping about? They are manned by robots, tirelessly looking for resources to mine on planets beyond our own. And that's it for our tour today, Rocketeers. Robco and its tiny partner, Repcon, thank you. Any further questions, please feel free to ask. You can tell that ro uh, ro that robot was designed by Robco. <laughs> Watch your step. 
Whoa, watch your step. You don't want to be facing this fearsome fellow if you accidentally stumble into a restricted area. Whether sporting the latest in dual miniguns, rockets, or laser cannons, the sentry bot not only takes its job seriously, it also takes no prisoners. It's proof of Robco's commitment to defense that these deadly guards are concealed in chambers throughout this facility. So let this be a warning. Watch where you step, or it'll come out. Or, or I'll come, Robco. Guns blazing. Robco's always had an eye for robotics, and this little fellow is no different. This robotic marvel can not only recognize your face and voice with advanced facial and auditory recognition technology, it can also broadcast video and audio as well. Think of it, all the sights and sounds of your radio and TV in your living room at home, blasted directly at you on the street, subway, bathroom, or wherever you may be. Never fear, you'll never miss a news bulletin or presidential address again, no matter where you are. Eddie, get me some TV, bro. Okay. The hand in handy. You can never have too many hands. Three. Why not four? That was Robco's inspiration behind the popular and cost-effective Mr. Handy model. The first of the lines shown here. Always a help around the household, whether with mom in the kitchen, using its titanium circular power saw, or in the garage with dad using its armor-piercing laser array. Mr. Handy is not just helpful, he's your friend too. Oh, It's got wheels! Some folks have asked, why not a protectron with wheels? Rob Crow was not afraid to answer that question. The protector bot is the answer. While safety standards prevented the three-wheeling dy uh, dyna dynamo from entering mass market production, despite Rob Crow's best intentions and teams of lawyers, we take consolidation in letting you see... Uh, yeah. In letting you can see... Letting you see... Whatever. Then you see this extremely well-funded experiment as it was intended. A robot moving so fast it looks like it's standing still. Lol. Our rich, rich solar system. A model of our solar system, not actual size. Beautiful, isn't it? Robco, with its subsidiary Repcon, has often gazed into the night sky, seeing rich pageant of stars and planets above us. Our goal? To send unmanned rockets to these other systems, seeing their beauty firsthand while mining even deeper into each planet's surface for precious resources needed here at home. This is our promise to mankind, extending our reach into a future where a number of Robco and Repcon rockets match the stars in the sky. And that is it for the tour. There's one last thing we need to be doing here. Go inside this door here. Uh, walk up these stairs. And over here on this console, which is not textured. Clearly, I have installed this mod incorrectly. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, these these texts. I need to take a little look at that texture pack. So, but aside from that, that is uh, actually the video done and dusted. Let me just check what my time is at. Here, sixteen eight. So eight plus four, probably about twelve minutes. I know it's quite a short video, but in the next episode, we're going to be exploring the rest of this place. So. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, check out the rest of the series, and of course. Don't let me keep you. I'll see you guys next time. How may I serve you, mistress?